Okay, now that we have a TD Ameritrade app set up, we already have some Python code with all the necessary packages set up. We know how to authenticate a request and execute some methods. Now let's actually dive in a little bit deeper and have some fun uh, finding some price data, getting some option information, and placing some trades. So uh, let's get started here. Uh, I'm on the documentation for TD API, which we already set up. And if you click Client Wrapper here, you'll see it has some additional information here. So I'm going to click instrument info and I want to find out a little bit of information about, let's say Apple stock, which is a common example that we use here. Um, you see under instrument here, there's this uh, search instruments uh, method. So I'm going to use that and you see it takes uh, symbols. So I'm assuming it takes a list of symbols. And so I'm going to use this in my code. Uh, so you see we have this get quote already for Boeing. So let's just get a quote for Apple stock real quick just to make sure we're still running. So I'm gonna run it and you see we get a stock quote for Apple stock. Um, it has a lot of information in the JSON, uh, but you see we have a closing price of 282.80, which sounds right. And we're gonna use this uh, get instrument here, uh, search instruments, I'm sorry. So we're gonna use c.search instruments. And I have this nice code completion because I have the uh, Python, Python package installed with uh, Visual Studio Code. And so you see if I type dot here, I have all this auto completion. So I'm gonna do a search. And so you see it pulls up search instruments. And if I do parentheses, you'll see it has a parameter for symbols. And so uh, I believe this accepts a list of symbols. And so I'm gonna put Apple in a list here. And then if I run this, uh, so I'm gonna do response equals, and then I'll just print the response and see what it looks like. Um, and also remove this uh, call here and let's call, let's run this one more time. So I'm gonna run it. It says search instruments missing one required positional argument projection. And so you'll see there's actually a second uh, parameter here called projection. And so we wanna see what that is, see instrument dot projection. And you see uh, it has these different uh, projections and one of them is called fundamental. And so there's more detailed documentation on what all these are, but I'm gonna use this one called fundamental which returns fundamental data for a single instrument specified by an exact sim symbol. And you can't just use uh, the string fundamental here. What's nice about this package actually is it has all these constants defined. So uh, we want to look at instrument.projection and uh, they have this projection class. So basically he's enumerated all these constants. So you don't just use a string. You want to use uh, this fundamental in all caps here. So uh, let's see, C dot instrument dot projection dot fundamental. So all these constants are nicely divided up into this uh, this object structure here. So you want to you want to do search instruments, a list of symbols, and then you give it this uh, fundamental constant here. And now if I print the response, let's see if we can get our uh, fundamental information. And as before, we need to call this JSON method to display it. And then I'll hit play again. And you see now we have uh, this JSON return for Apple stock. And you see how we have this key called fundamental and it has a bunch of information. And I'm also going to wrap this in json.dumps. And just to make this pretty so that it's easier to read. And the second parameter to json.dumps, we can do indent equals four. And this will make it nicely indented. And I can run this again. Let me do a closing parenthesis. All right, now it's easier to read. Now you can see all the information we get back from the API. We get fundamental data about Apple stock. We get the 52 week high and low, the dividend, the PE ratio, the profit to earnings to growth ratio, price to book ratio, profit margins, all tons of information, the revenue change year over year, market cap, dividend payout, volume information. So just a wealth of information you get from this API just by having an Ameritrade account. Uh, so um, that's great. So we have our instrument data and we can get our fundamental information and on a common stock and we can also get a stock quote to see what the current price is now what about options we mentioned one of the main reasons for using this uh this api is because we can get option data and the Robinhood private api is unstable alpaca doesn't support options so let's see what we can get regarding uh, option data so if you look back at the documentation we have this option change section which, uh, which has a ton of parameters here. So let's start exploring them. So we have this get option chain and we can pass it a symbol. And another thing to note, we can put other, uh, we can put multiple symbols in this uh, search instrument. So you see, I can get Boeing and Apple at the same time. So I just wanted to show that too. 
All right, so uh, we're going to do option option information. So I'll comment this out, and I'll do response equals C dot get option chain, and option chain accepts a symbol. So we'll do Apple stock again, and so I'll print that response the same way. So we'll just, we'll just keep using this line to, to just uh, pretty print this. So uh, I'll print the response, and let's see what our Apple option chain looks like. Tons and tons of data here. So we get, uh, let's see, if I wanted to buy a, a 485 put on Apple, for instance. So this has tons of calls and put options all in one place. So you see every single option over si every single date that's available for Apple stock printed in a big list. And so this is this is going to be hundreds or maybe thousands of different options uh, that you can order. So we want to filter this down a little bit. And so this provides a number of ways to filter down this option chain to uh, include exactly the options that we're interested in. Maybe we want to buy uh, next week's options or some monthly options, or we want to buy options for the end of the year. We want to make it very easy to filter down that list instead of showing just all of them in one big dump here. So how do we do that? Um, so uh, I'm interested in call options. I'm not really trying to short Apple stock at the moment. Uh, so let's say we think Apple is strong. We want to buy just calls. We don't want to list the puts here. So we have options here for the contract type. So uh, let's, let's do contract type. So uh, I'll leave all of these in. That way later when I post the code, we'll have examples for all of these. So I'll comment that out. All right, get option chain for Apple. And let's do contract type equals... And then uh, what are the contract types, right? So we do contract type and you see, uh, we don't just put a string. If you just put a string for like call here, which you might think is how it works, that actually won't work. It'll say uh, you got type string. Uh, so they want some, they want you to use this contract type uh, constant. So he's, he's enumerated all these here. So what you wanna do is just do uh, contract type equals C dot, uh, C, what is it, C, C dot op C dot options dot contract type dot and then we just want the calls. All right. So we have this built-in constant here and we can limit it to just call options. Right. And so now if I print out the list again, you're only going to see call options, right? So we don't just want all call options. Let's just say uh, we want uh, call option call options for uh, a particular strike price. So uh, we have that as a filter as well. And then so we can do, uh, let's see, strike. We can do a sp specific strike or a range of strikes. So I'll just do use the strike parameter. And let's try strike equals, uh, let's say, what's Apple at? 280 something, 282 we said. So let's say we want a to play earnings for a particular sh strike price. So let's do a call option for three the price 300, right? And I'll keep this separately. That way we can put it in the repo later. All right. And then we'll call this one all call options. All right. And then we'll do call options for a specific strike. All right. So I'm going to do and then strike equals 300. All right. And then let's run this again. And we'll see, right, call options for 2022. So we have a 300 call for 20, the year 2022. Looks like you can get that for about uh, 40, 40 bucks there, uh, which would actually be like 4,000 bucks, right? And then, yeah, January 20, uh, 2022. So we have all the dates here. So um, yeah, we can see all the 300 calls for any date. And then let's say we wanna only show like the next week's uh, worth of calls. We can filter this down even more and we can do call options for a specific strike and date range, all right? And so I can do that. I'll copy this code again, and then we just give it some more filters. So we can just do get option chain, contract type, strike equals 300, and we can do date. So we can do a from date and a to date. So it looks like we have to specify two dates, and today is Saturday the 18th. And so let's say we're interested in next Friday's uh, calls and also the calls for the following Friday. So that would be April 24th and May 1st. So to do that, uh, I'm going to do um, date. So from date and to date. So strike from date equals. And let's say we do the year 2020 04 24. So April 24th and then strike to date equals 2020 
0501. So that will be April 24th, and we'll also show the Friday after that, so May 1st option. So if we run this, and let's see what happens. You'll say, uh, it says string object has no attribute string from time. And so what that means, it looks like it's looking for a date object, so we can't just use these strings as is. So we're gonna use Python's uh, date objects in order to uh, pass it a date object, that, that way the library can work with it easier. And so let's create some date objects now. So to use date objects, we're gonna import date time, which is the regular Python date time package. And then for these dates, we're going to create date time objects. So I'm gonna do a start date, equals date time dot date time dot. Uh, so we create, we're gonna create a date object from a string. So we have this strp time, and then we can pass it a date. All right, so we give it April 24th, 2020. And then we need to give, tell Python the format. So we're gonna do percent capital Y, percent lowercase m, percent d, and then we call the date method here. All right, so we do that. And then we'll create one called end date. So if I do that, uh, and then I'll give it May 1st as our end date, we'll get two date objects here. And then instead of passing the, the string, we're gonna do start date, the object we have there, and then we'll do an end date. And if we do that, and now I'm going to run it again. And look at that, we have call option for 300 for May 1st. We see that we can buy that for 360. And then if you scroll up further, you see we also have the April 24, 300 call weekly, and you can buy that for you know 86 to 92 cents there. And so we filter down to, so yeah, so you see that we are able to use the TD Ameritrade API in order to retrieve uh, stop quotes and instrument fundamental data. And we're also be able, able to retrieve an entire option chain. We're able to show option prices for specific date, specific strike prices, and you know date ranges. And so we're able to filter down this list to the exact uh, options and stocks that we were interested in. And so if you use this as your broker and combine it with uh, some of the other videos I've written on how to detect uh, chart patterns, how to detect, uh, to analyze historical data, how to backtest, and how to use WebSockets to feed in real-time data. You can combine those things together and hook it up to Ameritrade as a broker here and uh, execute orders uh, inside of a trading bot. So uh, that's it for now. In the next video, uh, we're, I'm going to show you how to execute orders using the TD Ameritrade API. So to how to execute uh, buys and sells on options and stocks. So we're gonna figure out how to do that. Uh, and so, yeah, that's it for this video. I just wanna show you how to obtain uh, fundamental and instrument data and option prices. Um, yeah, so that's it for now. Stay tuned for the next video.